I released with a colleague an open source project, this is this, um, where we actually aim to migrate uh, COBOL applications um, with multi-agentic AI into Java Quarkus. Um, and this is public available on GitHub today. Um, and we also we did this together with one of our with one of our partners, where the website is now not loading or partially loading. And this partner is actually bank data. And bank data is one of the biggest conglomerates of banking services in Denmark. And they have still 17 million lines of COBOL, which is a lot. Um, and they do not really aim to do like the full exit out of the, out of the mainframe because the mainframe holds a lot of good things for them. But there are certain programs on their mainframe that they want at least partially to modernize to get rid of these dependencies. And also a mainframe, uh, like having your own mainframe is kind of costly. We also wrote a blog article about it, if you want to dive deeper into this project. Um, and there's, you can find all of this under the, where are my slides? Under the short term, aka.ms slash COBOL. There you can find a repository, have a look at it. Also a call to action, we're looking for collaborators. So when you are in an organization that has COBOL problems, or maybe don't have COBOL problems, how I just learned, and just want to continue or explore this further, we would be super happy if you would reach out to us and we can discuss that. But I don't want, only want to flex that we have um, published this. I also want to show it in action. So. Or, so I prepared it already here. So what I actually did is, uh, so what you actually need to do is basically only set up your, uh, your AI endpoint. In my, in my case now, it's like an Azure Open AI endpoint. We also provided a dev container for you so that you do not need to set up basically everything that you need. And then you just put your COBOL files into this COBOL source, forth, in COBOL source folder. Um, in this case, um, these are example files that I get, uh, got out of, an, of, out of a book that was publicly available on GitHub. And then we can now ask the agent to actually modernize it, or the agents. So when I now go for Dr. Run, making the terminal a little bit bigger, making the terminal a little bit bigger, We hope that my setup works. And you see it immediately starts working. Um, while it's working, I will show you the flow diagram, how it works. Don't we have like a flow diagram? I'm pretty sure we have one. No, we don't. But we have basically three main agents. So one is actually who's doing like the COBOL analysis. This is like an agent that does like the full reverse engineering step and preparation steps that, are actually, that I actually just described. You can see it here in the terminal. I'm going to make it bigger. It's currently analyzing the all the COBOL files that I just provided for it in this folder. Obviously, this is not much. This is only for demo purposes. And the more COBOL files we actually put in, the longer it takes. The longest, longest test run that we actually did were running for 12 hours. And it was like 50 files of COBOL. So it's quite a thing to do. Um, and after it has analyzed the COBOL files, scrolling a little bit, um, then basically like a dependency analyzer comes in place. At first, it tries to, um, to make sense out of this call chain that we have in COBOL files. If you have never seen that, COBOL files are actually referencing each other like we know it from modern, from, uh, modern programming languages, but they all do it by so-called go-to. Um, commands and these go-to commands are usually unconditional. You, so you can jump freely between COBOL files, and it's not unusual for like a COBOL program to have like 12, uh, 12 levels or more. So it's going really deep and sometimes also going up again. And we need to actually generate this call chain to make sense of what we are actually doing there. So we have the COBOL 
uh, the COBOL analyst to make sense of the COBOL itself. Then we have this dependency analyst who looks, OK, which COBOL, files, uh, COBOL file is calling which copybook, is calling which COBOL file again, and which also tries to make sense out of dependencies or dependencies we maybe do not need anymore because we have these utility classes implemented into the COBOL code. And last but not least, and everything, um, what they actually do, they write down in logs, so we can, all you can see here, um, it actually write down a log, so we have always full control what is actually happening. Um, this is orchestrated by, or orchestrated by the orchestrating function by Semantic Kernel. Semantic Kernel is an AI framework, a Gentic AI framework that is provided by us. It's, uh, it's written in C Sharp. Um, because we, at first we started with Autogen, which is based on Python, but then we switched to Semantic Kernel because the Semantic Kernel function is actually more powerful in this whole like orchestration. And we found out that this is really crucial. If you want to learn more about that, I briefly described it in a blog article what the problems actually were. Um, and then it actually starts to create like the logs, the behind the scenes logs. And when it comes to a certain point um, that it got all the analysis that it actually needs to be done, it also starts to write down these uh, in-between results into markdown files so that you do not only have like full control what happened in this like chat chat experience that you can see here in the in the terminal, but also that when it like breaks and oh, something always breaks, right? That you at least have the in-between results that then the agents can start to pick on again based on the logs and also on the markdown files that you have generated um, to continue the work or maybe use it as results to, work, to do for another run into one of your another COBOL modules. I say COBOL a lot because it's like the most complex thing that we currently face when talking about legacy modernization, but we actually designed this framework this way that you can choose basically your target and also your source um, completely free. It just depends on the prompting of the AI agents that you then need to give them new personas that they are actually able to digest something else. But our goal was to actually not do like a stupid COBOL to Java migration thingy. We wanted to create a framework. Um, but to actually validate that, we need people like you who actually try uh, to try it. Um, and let's have a look into the Java output. As you can see, we have some markdown files generated. Let me close the terminal a little bit, um, where it actually starts to show, does not show the mermaid diagram right now, but it, where it's actually started to generate some mermaid diagrams um, and a migration report, what it actually does. It's found six source files. These are the source files the files it actually generated and what it actually does. And when we are now looking into the org folder, we can now see that it actually generated on the first view perfectly fine Java code for me. This is what I wanted to show you. Um, showing you again, if you're interested in looking into that, um, we have aka.ms Cobol. Um, Thank you for your time. <laughs>